we've been talking about what we're coaching when we're coaching, that we're actually coaching our client's relationship to whatever it is that they're bringing to the coaching. We're coaching what they're focusing on, what they're choosing to focus on. We're coaching how they're seeing what they're choosing to focus on, the assumptions they're making, conclusions they're drawing, the meaning they're making, their beliefs that's underneath whatever it is they're bringing to coaching. So, so much of what is really transformational about the work of coaching is how we're creating awareness for our clients around how they're relating to themselves, to their goals, to others, to their lives. And what can um, be very helpful is understanding how our clients relate to their lives and their patterns. Um, what can be really helpful is understanding how our clients are relating to their lives and themselves in a patterned way. In other words, in a consistently predictable way. And if we have enough data, if we have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of narratives over time, we can determine what those patterns are. And so this um, video is about how patterns form, how we reveal those patterns or, or connect our, those patterns with our client so they can understand and see them, and then what we do with that information, okay? So how do patterns form? Well, our patterns form from a very, very early age. And when I'm referring to patterns here, I'm ta talking about patterns of, of thinking and feeling and wanting and believing that are developed early on in our lives and across our lifetimes. So we humans are born into this physical form that is wired to survive. You know, we're wired to survive, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually, energetically. We're, we're wired to survive in all these ways. And it's, and it's said that um, our brains are um, Teflon for positive experience and Velcro for negative experiences. And it's Velcro for negative experiences because we want to hold on to that because we want to remember it so we'll survive. And we learn how to survive in our earliest years of life when we couldn't do anything ourselves. We have this long, long, long maturation period, longer than any other species, in which we are completely dependent on other humans in order to live, in order to survive. So in those first years of life, we're learning so much we don't even know we're learning about how to be in relationship, about who we are, about what the world is and what it means. Right? And we learn all that from our parents, from our caregivers, by um, uh, being taught in that relationship what emotions are okay and what emotions are not okay, what behavior is rewarded, what is punished, what is appreciated and what is neglected, what's allowed and what's judged. You know, we, we learn all that about ourselves and each other and the world in a very, very young way, age and at a time when um, we have no language and no memory because we have no language. It's at a time which when we have what's called childhood amnesia, right, in which we all have. It's a time that we don't remember, don't have language for, and yet it has an extraordinarily substantial impact on our entire lives because it's the, the way that we've become patterned. And I don't mean just 
figuratively or metaphorically patterned, I mean neurobiologically patterned. Our, our um, brains are wired together in a very specific way that's unique to us and how we grew up and who we grew up with. So those patterns then become the common denominator of our experience throughout our lives. And yet we don't know that. We don't, we don't see that. We engage in the world and we unknowingly kind of expect to see now what we've seen in the past. And we expect to happen now what's happened in the past. And so we behave in a way now that is similar to how we behaved in the past. And so we get the same results. So what happens as coaches, one of the single most valuable, crucial things we can do to help our clients' lives really transform is help them become aware of their patterns, help them see what they can't see. And one of the ways that we can do that is through the EQ profile. The EQ profile reveals our clients' patterns, our way, their ways of thinking and feeling and wanting, particularly under stress, that they can't see. It's what they can't see about themselves and yet keeps tripping them up and not, not supporting them and actually living the life they want. So as coaches, we can listen to dozens and dozens and dozens of conversations and hours and hours and hours of coaching narrative to then begin to try to see the patterns in what our clients say or we can have them take the EQ profile and we can help our clients see with them the common denominator of their experience in the world, in life, and see how it may not be serving them and they might want to begin making new choices. Now, this isn't easy. This work is not easy. It's not easy for us coaches and it's not easy for our clients because we're literally asking them to change their neural pathways. These patterns we get caught in, these loops we got caught in, we're, it's because they're comfortable. Changing neural pathways is hard work. And it is the work of our lives as coaches to help our clients become a full expression of themselves, not an expression of their parents or their caregivers or the people around them that shape them the full expression of themselves. So that's how patterns form. That's how you can make your clients become aware of them. And then once they're come aware of them, you can work with cl your clients to create more choice around them. So they can live a life that's truer to who they are. So in the next video, we'll talk about the top three ways that clients tend to get in their own way in ways they can't see. I hope you'll join us.